What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today we have an L5P in the shop and we're going to be installing a Derringer Data Monster from Banks Power. So this has the monitor gauge instead of just the little switch like you saw in my last video. This is the Gen 2 setup which is easier to install. So I'm just going to get right to it. We're going to make some connections under the hood. Then we have to run one cable into the truck and the rest of the connections are made under the dash. So here's what comes in the kit. You have a gauge all your connections and your interface that go under the hood and we've got a gauge pod mount this tuner the derringer is good for 61 horsepower without any of their other accessories so this truck already has their ram air cold air intake and their monster five inch exhaust so we're looking at about 100 horsepower gain with this setup so we're looking at a thousand foot pounds of torque once all this stuff is installed so that's a gain of about 200 foot pounds and about 100 horsepower just by simply plugging some stuff in here a cold air intake and an exhaust you can also find install videos for those on my channel okay so here are all of our parts laid out our underhood harness our interface gauge cup gauge obd2 cable and the cable that runs through the firewall there are two different ways to run the cable through the firewall one is through the big grommet here and the other is through the fender on this truck we're going to choose to go through the firewall that way the cable isn't exposed to the elements. Everything is kept under the hood. You don't have to worry about weather getting at the cable. In my opinion, this way is a little bit easier. But if you want to route it through the fender, you can find the instructions on Banks' website. All right, so the two plugs that we need to deal with are here and here, right on top of the intake horn. Basically, you just unplug these, plug in the Banks harness, and then we're going to route the harness along the factory harness over above the fuse block, and we're going to start making our connections over there. These connectors are labeled as well, MAP and FRP, which is fuel rail pressure. Once you have these harnesses plugged in, you want to neatly zip tie everything and start running across the stock harness over to the fuse block. So now that we have our wire routed along this harness over on top of the fuse block, we have to make our connection to the Derringer module. All it does is plug in and then you need to zip tie it. I usually go against the fender here. There are some stock clips that hold the hood release cable in place just to make everything look neat and tidy. So we have our Derringer module over here. The next step is to run the cable through the firewall. I've already done that because it's kind of a pain. So that grommet in the firewall is pretty tough, but you can push it down and route the cable right through. On the inside of the truck, it's easy if you remove the fuse block, which I'll show you how to do here in a second. But finishing the connections under the hood, the through firewall cable connects to your Derringer module. And then there's a cap that goes on the back side of it. And then you're done under the hood.
There's your module sitting in place using the clip that's already in the fender. The cables run through the firewall. Now we'll go inside the truck. All right, so we're under the dash of the truck right now. This is the fuse block that I normally take loose from the firewall in order to get the cable through. There's three 10 millimeter nuts that hold it on. The one at the very top, you'll have to use a wrench. These two, you can use a socket. And then I just pull it forward and set it on top of the brake pedal. It makes it a lot easier to get the cable through the firewall. Now that we're inside the truck, we can start connecting the data monster, mount the pod, and then we can start it up. Okay, so we have our OBD2 cable here and our cable that comes through the firewall. These two cables are gonna be connected to the back of our gauge. Martin chose to go with a windshield mount instead of doing a pod mount in the A-pillar here. So what we need to do is run our wires up the A-pillar and then we'll sneak them out through here and we'll go into the back of the gauge up top. All right, we have our gauge pod mounted up here. Now what we need to do is route the wires through the hole in the back of the pod, hook everything up and key it up. Okay, depending on the gauge you have is gonna determine how these connections are made, but it's really simple plug and play stuff. So we have the newest data monster here. So it's just these two connections on the back of the gauge and then we can put the gauge in the pod. All right, after your gauge is mounted, you can tuck these wires up nice and neat, get your dash panel back on, and then we'll be good to go. All right, back inside the truck, you can see we have the Data Monster powered up. Now I'm gonna do a review video later of how to work this thing. You're gonna have six power levels, the ability to data log, and monitor a bunch of different stuff. Pretty simple to use, but the user manual is 73 pages long, so I'll do another video in a week or so of how to work that, how to set up your data logging and all that. But a pretty simple installation, a few connections made under the hood, a few under the dash, and then we're ready to go. All right guys, so that's gonna do it for the Data Monster install from Banks Power. So this truck now has the cold air, the exhaust, and the Data Monster Derringer tuner on it. So with the uh, iDash 1.8, you get six power levels, where if you do the switch, you only get three. So Martin's gonna drive this truck for about a week, tell me how it does, and then we're going to do a review on all the products as well as a little bit of a tutorial on the dash. It's a nice setup here with a little windshield mount pod, and you can see it powers up. Right now we're monitoring boost, EGT, and trans temp turned up all the way level 6. After you turn the key off, it takes about 10 seconds to power down. Really quite a simple installation, especially for the power that you get. Prices are reasonable as well. So if you need any Banks products, be sure that you contact us here at RPM Motorsports. And don't forget guys, follow me on Instagram. I'll put my name right up here. And always there's a link for merchandise in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, be sure that you comment on this video as well. Be sure you go to my homepage where you'll have the other videos for the cold air install and the exhaust install. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.